Hello everyone, Tim here again from Tim'sComputerFix.com. In this video I'm going to be doing a simple power jack replacement on an Acer Aspire 5610 motherboard. I'm going to be using my hot air rework station once again. But this board here poses a little bit of a new problem because I have some plastics that are extremely close to my solder joints here. So this is going to take a little bit of uh, doing with some with some heat protective tape and uh, in this video I'm going to show you step by step how I protect these components from getting from getting melted and burnt. Now in this video I'm not going to show a tear down and rebuild of the entire laptop I just want to show everyone my technique on how I take care of tricky issues with close plastics to solder joints that needs to be removed here. As we take a closer look at the bottom of the board here where the power jack is soldered to, you'll see here that pin number one is extremely close to a plastic component that we're going to have to really pay attention to when we're desoldering this jack. You'll see here the other four pins that need to be desoldered. And here is the actual new power jack. Now you'll notice that it has two feet that kind of clip into the board. So uh, we're going to have to kind of pry this power jack off as we heat it up to remove it with a pair of pliers. I'll show you that technique as we get closer to the desoldering stage here. You'll also notice two other plastic components that uh, that we have to watch out for. One is to the left of the number 8 pin there and it's yellow and one the one under that is another plastic component. I think we're just going to go ahead and heat protect all of those plastics to be sure we don't have any mishaps. In this particular case, I'm going to start off by using a solder wick to kind of thin out some of the solder around these solder joints. I think it's going to aid in whenever I use my hot air, just a little less solder to have to melt. So uh, I applied some flux to all of my joints here. Flux is really great for helping solder to melt. And I just kind of go around with my solder wick here just to kind of sop up you know, as much as I can, uh, I got excess solder that's around these joints to kind of aid me whenever I go to heat, heat this up with a heat gun. Uh, my thinking is, you know, less solder to have to heat up, uh, less time I have to apply heat to remove this power jack, so anything would help. Now, by no means am I a master at using soldering wicks. I do the best I can with what I have, but I did find out that using flux helps immensely when using a solder wick. Uh, it, it just helps that wick soak up that solder a lot better than trying to do it without flux. I also know that keeping your iron tinned and clean and at the proper temperature <laughs> all aids in uh, heavy success with using a solder braid. Again, I'm not a pro at it. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys do a lot better job than me, but I'm just trying to get some of this excess solder off. And here's kind of what it looks like now that I have that solder off. It's going to make this job a little easier. So now I think I want to go ahead and start to protect these plastics. So I'm going to break out my trusty heat resistant tape and I want to get it as far down on the edge of this plastic piece without interfering with the actual solder joint itself. It's going to be a little tough. I'm going to take my spudger when I get it all lined up in the place of how I like it. I'm going to kind of push down, press down, and mold it, press it firmly against the edges of the plastic component and get it as close as I can to the act, to the actual uh, solder joint there as you see I'm about as close to that solder joint as I can get without actually covering it up but I am covering the plastic component so we really want to be sure that's tight down we're gonna press it down firmly with the spudger and now I'm going to cover the other component the, the yellow one there and kind of do the same thing. Be sure it's covered up well. And be sure it's not interfering with any of the joints that I need to desolder. That's pretty important because 
if this is covering anything you're trying to desolder, uh, it's just not going to happen. That's why they call it heat resistant tape. So it's about the best we're going to do with this. Um, get it all protected. Press it down. Get it as flat as we can against the board. Make sure it's sticking to the board well, the best we can. And here's what it looks like before I get started applying the hot air. We pretty much just got a nice, got a nice protective cover over all of our plastic pieces. Okay, I think we're ready now to start applying some heat. Yeah, we're going to start off, of course, with applying some flux. And be generous. Um, the more flux, the better. Obviously, you don't want to you don't want to overpower it with flux, but you know, don't be scared to put plenty of flux on your solder joints. Now I'm just pretty much getting my plan of attack. I have the board elevated flat but elevated to where I can take my pliers here and kind of work it out as I heat it up because don't forget this power jack also has two clips where the feet go in on two sides so I'm going to have to use a little bit of force so I want to leave enough room underneath it. I also have aluminum foil on, the, on my table below just to be sure I don't burn my bench. We don't want to start a fire. So when using my hot air, I usually start off about four inches up off of the board. And as soon as I start seeing my flux activate, which it will start to melt and run, I will slowly move in closer and closer to start to heat the solder up and uh, until I start to see things get kind of molten. And once you'll be able to tell when the solder changes color, it's starting to molten and so I'll take my pliers and I'm going to slowly try to work this power jack off this board very easy rocking it back and forth and uh, steady applying the heat you can see all the joints are getting molten now we're kind of snapped in with those clips so I'm having to kind of work it and wiggle it back and forth And there we have it. So power jack successfully removed from the board. Now we're going to prepare to re-solder the new power jack on. What I'll do now is I'll clean off these solder joints with some isopropyl alcohol. I'll prop it up in my mini vise. I'll add some flux to the back side of the solder joints and I will pretty much with my pliers just kind of line up the feet of the jack into the solder joints of the slots with on the board where the jack goes and I'll kind of just heat up the back side and slowly get closer and closer applying very little pressure until the jack slips into place. This method works for me quite well. Um, there's other ways to do it, but this is how I prefer. If you've seen all my other videos, this just works well for me. So things heat up and you'll see this kind of fall into place. It's kind of hard to see on this video, but you'll kind of see it kind of fall in. And we're getting hotter now. Looking good. And we just fell into the front. Now we just fell into the back. And we're done. We take the heat off. We keep the pressure on for a few seconds. And now we check to see how flush the jack is with the board. Now after inspecting, it looks to me like uh, this power jack is nice and flush. 
So what we'll do is we'll remove all the heat resistant tape. We'll clean up all the flux with isopropyl alcohol. We'll add some fresh solder to the joints. And now we're going to do a continuity test to be sure none of my new joints here are making contact with the wrong pieces. So I'll just kind of do a continuity test to make sure we're not shorting out anywhere. And this turns out to be very good. Well, hey, I know this was an older board, an older laptop. I just kind of wanted to show you another technique of using hot air and a power jack replacement using hot air with desoldering and you know, soldering wicks and what have you. But I uh, hope you like this video. I have more on the way. So hit that like button, subscribe to my feed, leave a comment, check out my new website, timscomputerfix.net. Uh, that's a really in-depth site, uh, and I think you'll enjoy it. So until next time, everyone, see you soon.